So welcome. Here we are. It's uh, the Mindful Self-Compassion Practice Group. Everybody is at the right place. Um, we meet every third Friday of the month. And um, a couple people said they were new. For, this is their first time here. So welcome. It's lovely to have you here. And it's also wonderful to see some familiar faces. Um, Jean and I love to see this, do this group together. And it's, it's fun to have new people join in and also to see um, some of the folks that we feel like we've really gotten to know. So uh, I love Gino, he says, there's no prerequisite for this class. Um, there's only the aspiration or the wholesome desire um, to have a more compassionate relationship with ourselves. And then very naturally, what rises out of that, I think, is a more compassionate relationship uh, to others and to the world. So just a quick rundown of what we'll be doing. Uh, Jean will offer us a settling, uh, coming into our body meditation. And then there's uh, a certain type of practice that I wanted to share and for us to explore and do together. So I'll just uh, speak a little bit about some of the basic components or kind of context of these practices. And then Jean will lead us in some movement take care of our body a bit more, and then we'll have some time for practice and discussion. So I really want to hear people's experience of doing these practice because so much wisdom and understanding comes from what uh, each of you share about trying these new things, which are really kind of courageous. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that we are recording and this recording with our other ones are to be found on the Common Ground Loving Kindness spot on their YouTube channel, because it's a Friday night, just like the Loving Kindness. And what's really important for you to know is that they do a lovely job editing them. So what the only thing that makes it to the recording is things that Jean and I said. So all of your confidentiality is really well protected. Uh, when you offer uh, your experience or your questions. And then if you like to want to go back and explore one of the practices, it's there for you. So, Any questions before Jean offers us a meditation? Okay, great to have you here. Go ahead, Jean, thank you. Okay, so, um... You're welcome to turn off your video if that feels better for you during the practice sessions. It'd be great if you could turn them back on at the end just so we can see you if that's okay with you. There's no requirement for that. And if you, it's the end of a long day. If you feel more comfortable lying down, you can always lie down or you could even stand up. You know, there are three postures for meditation, lying down, sitting and standing. So choosing what feels right for your body tonight. I was just sharing with Jane that I've been five hours on Zoom, taking something from Spirit Rock on the embodied mind and I lay down through the whole thing. And I, so I can really recommend that if that's what's calling to you. So just taking a few moments now to find that comfortable posture, whatever that might be for you. And closing your eyes if that feels okay or keeping them gently open. And turning your attention now to the breath and if you wish, making the exhalation a little longer than the inhalation. So just taking a few deep breaths in, breathing in deeply into the belly and breathing out deeply. So signaling to the nervous system that it's okay that it's safe enough in this moment.
And now allowing the breath to find its own natural rhythm, fast or slow, deep or shallow. Allowing the breath to be as it is in this moment. Feeling the breath coming into the body and the breath leaving the body. Inviting the body to relax with each breath. And when the mind wanders as the mind will, then gently bringing it back to a focus on the breath. Each breath different from the rest. And now intentionally moving your attention from the breath to sensations in the body and starting with a sense of the body as a whole. The felt sense of the body, the solidity of the body, the weight of the body, This is the body in this moment. Now drawing your attention down the body to sensations in the feet. So moving your attention to sensations in the feet. feeling your feet touching the earth and seeing if you can relax into that support, the support of the earth. Noticing whatever sensations might be present in the feet, hardness, softness, warmth, coolness, aware of any sensations in the feet. Pleasant sensations, unpleasant sensations, sensations that are neither pleasant or unpleasant, just making space for them all. And moving your attention now from the feet up the legs to your seat. Feeling the touch of your bottom with the chair or the cushion or the ground. Noticing whatever sensations are present in this part of the body. not getting tight about it or striving to find the right label, just seeing if you can relax into the felt sensation of this part of your body. The felt sense of sitting. What does it feel like to sit? Aware of the pelvis, the solidity of the bones, 
and also the long bones of the legs. Sitting in the bones, resting in the solidity of the bones. And moving your attention now up the body to the torso, where perhaps of the large muscle of the diaphragm moving down and up as the lungs inflate and deflate. Perhaps also the felt sense of the ribs moving. or the beat of the heart. Allowing the quality of your awareness to be relaxed, spacious, open. Allowing sensations to come and go on their own. And moving your attention to the shoulders, a part of the body that can hold a lot of stress. So noticing what's present in your shoulders. And down your arms. Not needing to change what's present just giving it your kind attention. And moving now to the hands, feeling your hands resting in your lap or elsewhere. What do you notice in the hands and the fingers? Warmth, coolness, Heaviness, lightness, dryness, moisture. Just relaxing and opening to the sensations in the hands. Nowhere to go and nothing to do, just to be with the hands. And moving up the arms and across the shoulders to the neck. The neck that holds the heavy weight of the head. Extending, if you wish, some gratitude to the neck. Thanking it for its work. And giving it your kind attention. And aware of the weight of the skull resting on the neck. And the skin and the muscles covering the skull. Perhaps inviting the facial muscles to relax if they will. Allowing your face to let go of any burdens. And returning your attention now to the felt sense of the breath, bringing the breath into the foreground of your attention. Feeling the breath coming into the body and the breath leaving the body. This breath that has been with us through the most beautiful and the most difficult moments of our lives. This breath that has helped us to regulate our nervous systems, 
to develop resilience. So taking a few moments now to appreciate the breath. To offer gratitude for its support. And if you wish now, expanding your awareness to include the collective breath Every, of everyone here tonight on this call. Everyone here tonight breathing in and breathing out. Everyone here tonight inhabiting a breathing human body. Everyone here tonight united by the shared intention to be present, to be compassionate. So feeling the support of this group and of like-minded people everywhere. Like-minded people across the globe who desire to be kind, to be compassionate. All of us united in this intention. Breathing in and breathing out. And when you hear the sound of the bell, when you're ready, no need to rush. Beginning to bring some movement to the body again and opening the eyes if they've been closed. Thank you, Jean. Really appreciate it. So this evening, um, I'm really looking forward to exploring some practices that I learned about on a retreat with a woman named Mary. Is it Avery or Aubrey? Aubrey. Aubrey. Mary Aubrey. And she called these practices embodied self metta. And they're practices in which we nurture our own felt sense of metta or loving kindness or presence towards ourselves through the process of feeling metta being offered to us and also how we offer metta to someone who's very easy for us to offer metta. And we feel this in an embodied way. And through these practices, we have the opportunity to start to see that this sense of metta and even of compassion for ourselves is something that resides within us. And therefore, why, um, that's why we call them abodes. They are homes that we come back to. So I've really enjoyed practicing these and wanted to share them tonight with everybody here. And um, there is a certain a couple aspects of these practices that I think have um, highlighted some aspects of practicing self-compassion that have become more and more evident, I think, for Jean and I as we've been practicing and teaching and sharing this practice with people for a number of years. So I just want to give a quick uh, introduction to those before we have um, a nice amount of time to do practice and to, to talk about the experience of doing these practices. So the first one, the first aspect is that our ability to offer ourselves compassion is sort of rests on or is integrated into an underlying sense or ability to offer ourselves metta or loving kindness. 
So it's out of this underlying sort of friendliness or ability to be present to ourselves or sort of a supportive, friendly attitude about ourselves, out of which, out of which self-compassion rises. And without that base, it's really hard. <laughs> you know, it's really hard to be compassionate to ourselves if that underlying kindness doesn't exist. Uh, in fact, I think as a, as a support of this, the way um, Mary talked about the relationship between loving kindness and compassion was really helpful to me. She said that, you know, of the abodes, loving kindness or metta, the Pali word for loving kindness, is really um, sort of a sense of presence or um, a kindness or a sense of well-being or kind regard. And then when that comes in contact with suffering, it becomes compassion. So I was like, oh, well, that's pretty straightforward. So, so what we're going to do is just going to be working with that sense of metta, of loving kindness for ourselves. The second aspect, which sort of really has been striking me quite a bit uh, as of late, is that to feel these sense of metta and to, to trust it and to nurture it, it needs to be relational. And we actually start to feel this by feeling it being given to us. How many of you have sort of practiced loving kindness and traditionally it starts with saying the phrases and you and you give it to yourself and then you give it to an easy person and then more progressively difficult people. And I know when I was invited to do that or many of the times I've tried to do that, I, I couldn't find it. I could I like I don't I can say those words, but uh, I'm not feeling it. So there's a number of practices that Jean and I have integrated into this practice of self-compassion that starts with the feeling of receiving it. And we think about us as humans. That's how we start as humans, isn't it? Or as infants, we sort of feel that. And then once we start to feel it, we can start to, to give it. So that's a key piece of this. And then the next one, is that it's an invitation to feel the metta in the body, embodied. So many times we practice uh, self or self or we practice compassion or loving kindness using phrases, and that can be very beautiful. But for many of us, just the the process of language can sort of cut us off, and just it can feel kind of like an intellectual process. And in these practices, we're invited to sink down into the body, a felt sense. What does it feel like in my body? It's really sort of a new access, a new door into feeling um, meta. And I think that this is just a very fascinating way. And um, I know for myself that there were many reasons that I sort of cut off that relationship to my body. I they were like, I sort of cut the wires. Um, I think many of us have. So if that's true for you, when you're invited tonight to do this practice and to sink into the body and feel the body, um, to go gently, to go kindly, to have patience. Uh, to be curious, and if it feels like it's too much, and then to move away from that, because our relationships with our bodies are different for each one of us. So it's just important to notice what that's like for you, and again, to be patient, to be kind, to be curious, as you re-invite that relationship, that opening, that awareness of how you feel this in the body. So those are sort of the core pieces that uh, fascinate me and make me really love uh, these practices as part of a support to our self-compassion practices. And what I, I find that through these is that that real trust, that trust in our own ability to feel well-being, to feel kind regard. And then when 
difficulty arises to allow that to shift to compassion really grows from a very natural, organic place. So um, I'm just looking forward to sharing these with you. I'd like to start um, with a poem. And I like this poem because in the way that poems do, it describes something, I think, uh, in a way that uh, just conversation doesn't. And for me, this poem can describe that place of refuge, that place that we can glimpse, that we can start to experience of our own ability to experience uh, metta and compassion. And um, for many of us, this is just a beginning. We don't have the expectation that we live here all the time, but as we continue to do these practices, these become more and more a home for us, a place to return, a place of refuge that we can trust. So I just wanted to share this poem. It's called Birthright and it's by Donna or Dana Falls. Despite illness of body or mind, in spite of blinding despair or habitual belief, who you are is whole. Let nothing keep you separate from the truth. The soul illumined from within longs to be known for what it is. Undying, untouched by fire, or the storms of life. There is a place inside where stillness and abiding peace reside. You can ride the breath to go there. Despite doubt or hopeless turns of mind, you are not broken. Spirit surrounds, embraces, fills you from the inside out. Release everything that isn't your true nature. What's left, the fullness, the light, and shadow. Claim all that as your birthright. So she talks here, even though there's illness of body and mind, and even though there's blinding despair and habitual belief, we are whole. There are a place, there is a place within us of stillness and abiding peace with sort of that sense of connection to ourselves. So these practices are a way for us to explore these, nurture these, develop these. Oftentimes I think, I, I always think in images and I, I know Jean, we were talking about this and you were saying it's like a little seed, you know, or a little plant. I think a little plant and we take good care of it and we water it and we keep the wind out of it and we put it in the sun. And uh, another way I think about it is uh, maybe for those of you who go camping and you want to start a fire and you have a little bit of tinder and maybe something and the, the fire is starting and you blow on it very carefully and you add a little bit more and you add a little bit more and pretty soon it warms up and it's burning all on and you're, you're its own. And I kind of feel like these practices are like that. And the lovely thing is, is the Buddha taught us these practices because he deeply believed that each one of us are capable of this. There's some point where he says, I would not ask you to do this if I did not think you could do it. So um, with the opportunity to just explore, see what it's like for you, see what, uh, see what arises for you. And again, I wanna say, I, I am just so taken by the collective and personal um, difficulty that we're in right now. The upheaval um, with what's going on with race issues in this country and the political unrest and the divide and the grieving that happens with the pandemic that we have a collective and we also have our own personal um, difficulties that are happening. And I, I think about this sort of like a, a choppy sea and it's just like really choppy. And I, I feel like these practices aren't the belief like, oh, I should get all the sea to 
to rest or to, to soften because we're not going to do that. But I think more of it like an island where we can get on the island and we can take a moment and we can lay in the sun and we can have just a rest. And the more and more we do that, the more and more we can find this island and the larger the island gets and the better we know the island when we come back to it. So for me, that's sort of an image of, of doing these practices. And of course, we'll go back into the choppy water and we'll barely be keeping our head above, but then we have the opportunity again to know that this place uh, exists and we can nurture it and develop it and come back to it. So I'm wondering if there's questions, any comments um, about any piece of that, maybe a recognition of something that I said or something that didn't quite settle All righty. So, Jean, I wondered if you would like to um, offer some movement and then we'll have some time to be able to do um, practice. Good. Thank you. Yeah, so we started out with the body scan. So I would invite you to, if you can, bring that same level of awareness to the movement. We're not going to do anything too uh, vigorous here. Uh, so let's, um, let's take a moment and settle once again into your body in whatever posture it's in. And just as I mentioned in the meditation, we have the sense of sitting in the bones. That's actually a phrase that comes from Zen. But we, we might be able to connect to that sense of solidity in the bones the weight of the bones. And then if you choose to, I'm going to invite you to mindfully and slowly stand up. So again, seeing if you can keep your attention, at least some of it, on the felt sense of the body. If you were gonna to describe to somebody what's necessary to stand up, I know the first time I did mindful walking, it was like, oh my God, I had no idea it was that complicated. So I think it's, it's equally, if not more complicated to actually go from a sitting posture to a standing posture. So bring your full attention to that process and just see what you can notice as you, if you choose to come to a standing posture. And maybe some appreciation for the fact that you can stand if you can, or that you can sit. So taking a moment now to, to stand with your feet hip width apart and sensing the pull of the gravity, gravity on the body. It's what keeps us standing. And again, feeling the weight of the body, how we're standing in the bones. So these bones are held together by ligaments and tendons and things, and they can get kind of cranky, at least mine can, when we do so much sitting and when it's cold and it's winter and we're bracing. So it's good to kind of warm up the joints in the body. So let's start and just open our jaws. Don't open them very far, but just open the jaws a little bit and move them around. You can massage the sides of the jaws. Oftentimes I'm surprised at what I find when I do this. So exercising the jaw. And then if you choose to, you can drop your head down to your sternum, towards the sternum. Let the back of the neck relax. And then slowly roll the head over so you're looking over your right shoulder. And roll the head back to the middle. 
and over to the left shoulder, beginning to just move the joints in the neck. And again, down to the center and to the right. And roll to the front and to the left. And coming back to center and then the head straight. If you choose to, you can place your hands, interlace your fingers and just let the head relax back into the hands so we don't want to crank the neck, but just let the neck relax a bit in the hands. And then bringing the arms down. And we can begin to move the joints in the wrists. So rotating the hands in one direction and then going the opposite direction. And then you can make fists and then release them. If you have arthritis like I do, that's a really good thing to do. We really need to move the joints so we get lots of fluid in them. And then you can swing the arms a bit and get the elbows moving. You can go in front, sides, whatever feels good to your body. If you have shoulder issues, you can be extra special careful on this one. Don't do anything that causes pain. And then letting the arms come to stillness. And then we can place our hands on our waist and we can just move the hips around a little bit. So making a, keeping the knees soft, just moving the hips in one direction. And then the other. And then you can place your hands above your knees and let, bring the knee with a slightly bent knees, making small circles with the knees in one direction. And then the other. And then standing up. And if you want to hang on to something, if your balance doesn't feel so hot tonight, just raising up one foot and circling the foot in one direction. So giving some movement to the ankle and then the other direction. And then you can point the foot and then flex it and point and flex. And doing the other foot, so balancing on the opposite leg, moving the ankle in one direction and the other. Point and flex, point and flex. And then coming back to standing. It's taking a moment now to connect with, again, the sense of the body standing, supported by the earth. Noticing if it's any different than when you started or the same. And then we can just start gently marching in place. So just list, lifting one knee and then the other. If you want, you can move the hand so opposite, as though you were a soldier, opposite arm and leg. This is really good for the brain. We're using both hemispheres while we do this. Good for balance. And if you choose, you could speed it up a bit or not or slow it down, just seeing what happens to your attention as you change the speed. And then slowly coming back to stillness. And once again, noticing how the body is. And then we'll just start shaking a bit. This is really good if you've got skeletal issues. If you're my age, you might have osteoporosis or whatever. Bouncing like this, letting the feet bounce a little bit and letting the arms go makes the skeleton strong sitting in those bones. So just let it go. Just bounce around. Don't 
feel self-conscious. You can put your arms out. We had some music, we could dance. So just let it rip. Do whatever you feels good to you. And then come back again and just bounce a little bit on your feet. Again, it strengthens the skeletal, the skeleton when we do this. And then slowly coming back to stillness and noticing how it is. And then just discerning if there's anything else that your body needs right now in this moment and giving yourself that. So if you need to move in a different direction, whatever you need, taking a few moments to do that. And then we'll come back to a seated posture. Thank you, Jean. I, I like fine. the I like the permission. I like the permission to let it rip. <laughs> <laughs> I could see the reflection of myself in the in the window, and I thought, "Oh, I'm glad nobody else is seeing this." But it sure feels fun. <laughs> Thank you. It's great. So we're going to have a, a nice bit of time for practice. We'll do uh, maybe two, probably two, maybe three, if we have time, meditations. And the first meditation, we're going to focus on receiving metta. And then the second meditation, we're going to, we'll do that again, receiving and then offering metta. And between this, we'll have time to sort of explore uh, what this was like for, for uh, individuals because we learn so much from hearing either where there might be resistance or where there's ahas or where there's frustrations or whatever the experience is like, we learn a lot from each other. So as we do these practices again, I want to remind you that this is a practice in which we are developing that ability to see that this uh, opportunity for metta, for compassion, is something that resides inside of us. And by doing these practices, we start to get to know it. And we get to know it by understanding ourselves as relational human beings, because uh, that's so much of where we feel it. And then um, I, again, want to just invite you to sink into the body and just notice, ah, oh, what, what do I feel? And it might not be much, or it might be a lot, or it might surprise you, um, but just allow yourself to say, ah, oh, where is this that I feel within the body? Okay. So, so what I'd like you to do for our first meditation is that I would like you to choose uh, either an individual, a person or a being or uh, a resource or maybe a place in nature that it's very easy for you to receive metta. So that could be a, love, a beloved person in your life. It could be a teacher. It could be a spiritual being. It could be a four-legged being. It could be a loved, beloved pet. It could be a grandmother. Um, or it might be just a place or um, a part of nature. Like for instance, many people feel a deep connection to the North Shore. I know I have a huge tree in my backyard that I just feel so much uh, care and meta from. So it really doesn't matter. I just want you for a moment to say, okay, what would be a person, a being, a place in nature where I can feel 
that I can receive metta from. And I, I would encourage you not to pick a romantic kind of partner, you know, like a spouse or a boyfriend or girlfriend. They, they can be complicated. <laughs> and, and not to pick a complicated relationship. Pick one that feels just really simple, like, oh, yeah, I can just feel that. Like the first time I did this type of meditation, I picked a mentor from college. I could just, oh, he came to mind. So, and if you're someone who kind of does the Rolodex, like I got to figure out the right person, got to figure out the right person, just let you pick one. Just pick one, go with it. Just notice what happens as you go through the meditation. Okay. Does everybody have an idea? Do they like to what or who or? resource they'd like to receive your receiving metta. okay all right and again i invite you if you'd like to turn off your camera during the practice you can so we'll begin by settling into the body Just allowing yourself to feel into the body, sitting on the chair, perhaps feeling the feet on the ground. And perhaps feeling the breath as it gently comes into and goes out of the body. Just feeling the body gently expanding and contracting with a very natural rhythm of the breath. Letting the awareness sink down into the body, noticing whatever sensations are present. And if the mind is busy or distracted, you can just simply invite it back again, come back. Come back to this body, feeling this body right now, right here. Bringing your awareness into the body in whatever way feels comfortable for you. And if there happens to be any discomfort in the body, just see if you can acknowledge it. And also invite your attention to take a wider awareness of the body that perhaps can include the discomfort but isn't overwhelmed by it. Settling into the body and the feeling of the body sitting on the chair. I'd like to invite you to bring to your awareness the person or being or place for whom you find it easy to receive metta. Bringing into your awareness fully this beloved person or being, or perhaps this place in nature where you simply feel the ability to be present, that you feel held or accepted, cared for.
and just feeling the metta being radiated towards you. In whatever form it is, just allowing yourself to feel the metta bringing this person or being or place into awareness as clearly as you can and feeling the love or acceptance, the presence, the goodwill that is being offered to you. Allowing yourself to open the heart and soften the body. To allow the feeling of metta that's being radiated towards you to come into the body. Just notice whatever the felt sense of the meta that you're receiving, however you feel it in the body. There's no right or wrong way. You're just receiving. You're just opening and allowing And if the mind becomes distracted, you can again invite your attention back to the beloved person or being or place and feel their presence again. And feel the meta that they offer you, they radiate towards you, just feeling it in the body wherever you feel it most easily. And now I'd like to invite you to allow that person, being, or place to recede into the background as you retain the felt sense of metta in your body. Just allowing yourself to be curious about how you feel this within your body, whatever is present. And then as you hear the bell, you can turn on your cameras and bring your attention back to the group. So what are the questions that arose for you or reactions to this practice? Yeah, 
I'm really glad you said that. I'm sure there's other people that experience that. And I love what you, you're to choose a place or to keep experimenting with where might feel safe. And it might even be an imagined place, even. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm wondering if you have anything you'd like to Jake say, Jean. Do you have thoughts? Uh, one thing that's been helpful to me and uh, comes to mind is you might reflect on if there's something that would help you to approach this. So uh, I remember being taught of, of, of putting in the traditional way of practicing loving kindness, you know, we offer it to difficult people towards the end. And the suggestion was put them on the other side of a road or put a fence up or, you know, some, some sort of protection or boundary so that you can begin to relax a little bit into it. So you might, you might reflect if there's something else you need uh, in order to um, feel more comfortable with it or, and or just to offer yourself compassion for the difficulty of feeling safe enough. I'm so glad that you're saying something, Barbara. And maybe uh, with our next practice, you want, might wanna get up and, and just do some movement or take care of your body. That might be something that you'd like to do. Um, I think so often when we do these practices to experience uh, we see where we haven't experienced it. Yeah. And therefore it's a really courageous act. And um, sometimes we go to like the place where there's the most energy. And that place can be like, almost like sticking our finger in a socket or, and, and we might start with something that's very simple, you know, something very, where we did feel it, like uh, a friend in kindergarten or a, um, a, a teacher in high school or something, something that has uh, where it is present and it's maybe not as charged, but I'm really glad you said something because this is part of the practice. It's the purification, isn't it? Where it's the releasing of the, the pain as well. Um, well, um, let's, if, if it feels like you would like to, let's do another. And oftentimes this can feel much safer is this is when we offer Metta to someone else. And so what I'd like you to do, uh, and uh, again, choose if this feels like something that feels like it's uh, a good spot for you is to choose someone who it's very easy for you to offer meta too. And it might be, again, a person, simple relationship you have with someone that you just feel positive towards. It might be a being, it might be a beloved pet, it could be a spiritual teacher or a mentor, or it could be a place that you are just very fond of being, where you feel like you can offer um, meta. Okay. So and Jane, I'm going to yeah. mute everyone. So then you'll need to unmute yourself. Okay, thanks. Uh -huh. All right. So if you'd like to turn off your cameras, feel free to do that if you'd like. And settling into the body. Perhaps taking a few deep breaths. as a way to come into the body, feeling the body gently moving, expanding and contracting with the breath. Just feeling how the breath gently comes into and goes out of the body. Letting your awareness settle into the body, noticing whatever is present at this time. And 
And I'd like to invite you to bring to mind a beloved person or being or place for whom it is very easy for you to give metta. A being or person or place for whom it's very easy for you to be present. Sending them care or goodwill. just bringing all the different aspects of this person, being, or place into your mind's eye. And then offering them a sense of loving kindness or metta, of care or goodwill, And just being aware of the felt sense in your body as you send them metta. Just noticing the sensations in the body as you bring to awareness this person or being or place for whom it's very easy to radiate metta, to wish them well, Just allowing yourself to experience this feeling of sending metta. Just noticing where you feel it in the body. It's radiating out a sense of goodwill, a presence of love or acceptance. And then allowing this person or being or place to reside into the background and just noticing the felt sense of metta in your body. This might be the same way that you felt it when you receive metta or it might be different. Just noticing this experience of metta in the body and knowing that this is a abode within you, a place of friendliness, of positive regard, in which you can return a refuge And then allowing your attention ever so gently to come back to 
the group. Sometimes this can be um, a much more accessible practice. I think the research in self-compassion says that almost 80% of the people um, say that it's much easier to offer um, feelings of, of compassion rather than to receive. And so I'm just curious what this experience was like. Love your reflection on on your awareness of your friend uh, and their uh, their response to receiving the meta. Yeah, this has been um, really a powerful practice for me to share, and um, uh, I always feel like I learn so much from what people are are talking about, and I'm so aware of the courage it takes for us to open our hearts. Um, to the potential for compassion and for metta because it opens those places where we have felt that it was missing. So I, I would just encourage you to um, not turn away <laughs> completely from these, to sort of touch them lightly, experiment with them. I know when I started these practices, it was really hard for me. And um, I can feel the benefit of continuing to allow uh, what I would say is my heart to warm, to believe that this love or acceptance or presence could, I could actually accept it. So um, I support any one of you in wanting to continue to sort of just gently explore it. So thank you all. Thank you all for your courage and your vulnerability and your uh, willingness to stick with it. It's very cool. So Jean, would you uh, like to? So what I'm aware of is having received uh, the gift of all of your presence and having received your, uh, your courage to speak up or just to be present here practicing with everyone. And I, it's just like, it struck me like, oh, I'm receiving it right now. So, you might just see if you can settle into that feeling for a moment that everyone here tonight took this time out to show up and to offer their presence and any reflections that you might have offered. That, that That is something that we've all received and we've received Jane's teachings as well. So um, you can put that in your reserve of <laughs> uh, kindness received. <laughs> um, and a way that we can offer kindness, one of the ways that we can offer is through the practice of generosity. So I'll just say a couple of words about that. So Common Ground operates on the principle of generosity, which is practiced most strongly, I think, in this lineage of Buddhism. So that, that there is the expectation and the practice of everything being offered freely. So Common Ground uh, receives the generosity of everyone who who offers it and that's how they keep running. And uh, if you would like to offer generosity tonight, Jessica has been generous in putting something into the chat. Uh, yeah, so there's instructions, there's a, there's, a, there's a link actually on the Common Ground page and there's a little piece there, um, which you don't need to read now, but uh, so that, that's a way to offer kindness back. And um, one third goes to Common Ground as an organization and two thirds goes to, to Jane and I. <laughs> I always say this and then we fight over it. <laughs> we don't. Uh, uh, so um, just recognizing again, the goodness of our having come together tonight and of our having spent this time exploring and practicing um, kindness, receiving it and giving it out again. 
And uh, to recognize that we do that not only for our own benefit, but for the benefit of all beings everywhere. And we might even want to call to mind tonight those who are especially suffering in this country, those who are in parts of this country who, where there's no heat, where there's no water, where there's no electricity, where there's food scarcity. So perhaps calling to mind those who are especially vulnerable. There's so many vulnerable people, but there's quite a lot of them now in the parts of this country. Calling to mind those people and anyone else that you would like to call into this circle who might benefit from the goodness of our practice together. So just silently calling to mind those people, even naming others who you would like to call in and then dedicating whatever goodness that we have gained from this cultivation of kindness for ourselves and others, dedicating that to the well-being of all beings everywhere, especially those who are, are very vulnerable who are at risk in so many ways. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be safe and protected. May all beings be free from suffering. So thank you for coming, for your presence, for your gifts. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you all. Take good care. <laughs>